All those opposed nay, I was happy. And at this time we'd like to have our Senator Embry speak to us. And we appreciate you being here, Senator Embry. And uh, he's a, he's our former judge executive of Ohio County, too. Yeah. And we've appreciated him for many years. Thank you. Glad to be with you today. Um, they called me and asked me to speak. I had many conflicts today. Uh, I was speaking to the Senior Citizen Community Luncheon in White Plains in Hopkins County at 11.30. Normally they eat and then the speaker speaks. Because I was trying to get here, they allowed me to speak first before they ate, so I was able to make it. Also, my Butler County retired teachers are meeting today, but I didn't promise them I would be there, so I'm here. I have another meeting in Morgantown at 4.30. We'll cut right to the chase, what you would be mostly interested in, and I'm going to tell you how I think it is. Uh, and that's mostly because of my conversations with members of the State Senate. I don't really have that much interaction with the House of Representative people. Uh, there's 38 of us. Uh, there is no support of any significance for any cuts to retired teachers' pensions. In other words, whatever you're drawing, it's my opinion you will continue to draw that amount. Uh, also, there appears to be no support for changing your uh, defined benefits to a uh, 401k type thing. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen either. So what you have earned, you will continue to draw. That's the main thing you would be interested in. Now, I can go some time on, uh, on how I think it will be for people presently teaching and people who have not yet been hired. If you're interested in that, uh, I'll do it. You know, but I think the main thing you're interested in is your pension. Uh, do you want me to elaborate some more or, or answer questions? What do you want me to do? Well, as I understand it, basically our contract, whenever we were hired in as teachers, that this would be our pension plan yes. for as long as we live. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, promises have to be kept, and uh, we're not going to uh, take anything away from what you have earned. That's the majority opinions. Now, I might just ramble on a little bit. Uh, the governor had a consultant make some recommendations. Uh, that was his decision to get an independent person to do that. Uh, that was that consultant's recommendations. That was not the governor's recommendations or ours. We had nothing to do with that. As it turns out, those recommendations uh, was pretty sorry and uh, uh, the people that's working on uh, the legislation that we will be voting on when we have a special session sometime maybe November uh, tell me that their proposal will have very little semblance to those recommendations be much different and I think that is the case and you have uh, you may not realize this, but you have a lot of friends in the General Assembly. Uh, like myself, there's a number of retired teachers. Uh, there's at least 15 or 18 legislators whose spouse is a teacher. Uh, Jeff Hoover, who is uh, Speaker of the House and who is on the group, in the group that is writing the legislation, his wife is a teacher. And we have uh, retired administrators and su school superintendents serving in the General Assembly. So you have lots of friends looking out for you. Uh, the governor was on radio uh, in Louisville uh, 10 days or so ago. He's been quoted in the newspaper in Louisville and Lexington. Several disagreements he had with the uh, recommendations of the consultant. I'll give you an example. 
the consultant recommended that uh, COAs that had been given since 1996 would be withdrawn. Uh, that would have cut pensions probably a third. The governor never supported that, and now the 138 members of the General Assembly, zero. Nobody supported that. So that was set aside quickly. Uh, there will be, and I'm not sure I'll vote for it, I don't know what they are yet. By the way, I can't tell you how I'm going to vote on the proposal. It hadn't been written yet, so I haven't had a chance to read it. They're working on it. <coughs> Uh, there will be substantial changes, I feel. The majority agrees to this, both parties, Joey Richards and others, uh, Democrats and Republicans, to people that have not yet been hired. I think there will be substantial changes. Whether I'll vote for that, I don't know. I don't know what those changes are. I can guess. But uh, I think that's where most of the changes are going to be made. I don't see uh, majority support for the people who are working to not let them count their sick days toward their retirement. They've earned them and I think they'll let those be counted. That's, that's what I get the majority opinion thinks. Uh, but I think there will be changes for people who's not hired. You know, they may raise uh, the time you have to work to 29 years or 30, you know, I don't know. It won't be 65, that's not going to go. Uh, they may increase the part that those people will pay into retirement and increase the part that the uh, state matches. They may do that, I don't know. Uh, they may even put them on a uh, defined uh, compensation, a uh, 401k, the new hires. They may do that. I'd probably vote against that, but, but uh, uh, they may do that. In this bill, this is how it's going. The uh, Speaker of the House and his leadership staff, the President of, Senate, of the Senate and his leadership staff, and the Governor and his key people, they're writing the legislation. They tell me it's going to take about a month uh, to get it together. It'll be hundreds of pages. Uh, when it's together, they'll present it to uh, our leadership will present it to the rest of the members and it will be made known to the media. I think a few weeks will go by to give everyone time to comprehend it, study it, <coughs> understand it. Then the uh, majority whips in the House and Senate will poll our members as to whether they're for it or not. Uh, on that poll, I'm going to vote no. I don't want them to think that uh, they're going to call a special session because I voted yes. However, I've reserved my right to, to change that when we actually get there. But they will not call a special session until the whips tell the governor and our leadership that there's votes to pass that legislation. Uh, so when they call a special session, whatever it is, will, will, I think it will pass. That doesn't mean there won't be lots of debate, you know, about it. But it will be uh, uh, assimilated to the public and to the members for several weeks before a session is called. And you know, there may be some changes made in it during that time before the session is called. Um, so, uh, so you say that before the session will actually be called, there must be enough uh, positive votes that they think they'll vote for it before yeah, they ever uh, call it. Uh, one of the leadership officers is called the whip. Yeah, I understand. Uh, they, uh, they poll us. Mm -hmm. And if there's not enough people for it, there's no need to call them a session. That's right, because we would be wasting money and wasting time. Okay. Uh, and I said, when they poll me, I'm going to vote no, just so they won't be calling it on my vote, because uh, I make my mind up this way. Uh, I'm a Republican, but I do not uh, answer to or am a rubber stamp for any political party. I get along good with leadership and with the governor. However, I am not a uh, rubber stamp for, uh, um, for them either. You know, I go, and this has been successful for me for 11 elections, 
I go with the majority opinions of my constituents, the people I represent. If I don't do that, no one else will because senators from Louisville, Lexington, Hazard, Paducah, they're not that interested in what my constituents think. But it's my duty to represent them. That's my opinion. And that's what I do. And I do not poll my constituents because you can call people. They may not even know or understand what you're talking about. And if you press them to tell you whether they're for or against something, they may tell you. Uh, they may not really care one way or the other. I make my decisions by people who contact me, either by, it's mostly by email, sometimes by phone, letters, faxes, Facebook messages, primarily email. When I'm in session, I get close to 200 contacts a day. When I'm out of session, it's more like 25 to 30. And I count the ones of my constituents who care enough to contact me about an issue in their own words at their own initiative. Uh, that shows me they really know what they're talking about and they really care. That's the ones I count. And uh, I go with that majority. So I may not know what that is when they call the special session, uh, but while it's going on, I'll get a feeling for it. And that's probably how I will vote. Now, the legislation, I think, will be in one gigantic bill. I don't think we're going to vote. Uh, this doesn't happen, so I don't think it will. I don't think we will vote issue on one thing and another thing and another thing. I think it will be the bill. There may be things in it I really like. And they, you know, they may not cut any, uh, and I don't think they will cut any pensions any. And they will keep you on your... Uh, Define benefit. That'd be great. They may do some other things I don't like that my constituents don't like. So whether I'll vote for the whole bill, yes or no, I don't know. I don't know what it is yet. Uh, but uh, I hope it's good. I hope it keeps promises. I think it will. And I hope it makes our uh, uh, pension system stable and sound. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> okay, any any other questions? Uh, Senator Joe Bowen had some comments in the paper uh, back a few weeks ago. Okay, I haven't read that, so what was it? Well, he was talking about how he was going to uh, consolidate the retirement systems. I do not want the Kentucky Teacher Retirement System to be consolidated with other retirement systems. Um, he's actually got a bill to separate CRS from KRS, that would separate them. Okay. Uh, and uh, change the notion a little bit. There. Yeah, he and he sponsors that bill. He is probably considered the one in the Senate the, the most active in on the retirement issues. Now I have done two things, both unsuccessful. I have uh, co-sponsored two bills to do away with a legislative retirement system because I don't think we need it or should have it. Uh, that didn't pass. I have also suggested, again I did just recently, together with Senator uh, Meredith, Steve Meredith from Litchfield, that uh, the legislative retirement system be placed in with the uh, uh, KRES, with the teacher's uh, retirement system. By the way, Senator Meredith's wife is a teacher at Clarkston Elementary School. Uh, that does not have majority support. Now let me point out a couple of things so it would be clear. There's over 300,000 people in the teacher retirement system. There are 387, excuse me, 337 in the legislative retirement system. It's real little, you know, hardly... Uh, if he was doing a pie chart, the uh, teacher's <coughs> system would be a basketball and the legislative would be a pinhead. That's the difference. Uh, the, the legislative retirement system is in better shape. It's funded at about 70%. There's a couple of reasons for that. Most people in the legislative retirement system didn't go in right out of college. 
I was 62 when I was elected. So very few of them served 27 years. I'd be 89 if I served 27 years. So very few of them uh, draw full retirement. Also, the teacher retirement thing, lots of people draw retirement. 15, 20, 25, 30 years. I've drawn 21 years. Very few legislators draw over six or eight years. Uh, Julian Carroll has the largest legislative pension of those working right now. He's been a uh, state representative, speaker of the House, lieutenant governor, governor. He's in his third term in the state senate. His term has two more years to go. He'll be 88 when his term expires. He's not going to draw his pension 27 years or 20 years or 10 years. You know. So legislators are paying out a lot less uh, in their uh, benefits, and very few of them are, are uh, fully funded. But I don't even think we should have that program, and, and it would be a, uh, although it would make little difference, I think it would be uh, a uh, sign of good faith just to throw it in with the... Uh, with the teacher retirement. Okay, anything else? Yes. Has there been any uh, <clears throat> suggestion or talk that you might know of concerning possibly uh, teachers paying state income tax on their annuities? I don't think that will happen. I don't think it will. You know, there's all kinds of wild proposals. You know, there's 138 <coughs> and there's probably 100 different proposals. Uh, well, they, they pay federal. I mean, we, we pay federal income tax. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just wondered if anybody had ever suggested that maybe we ought to pay state income tax on our pensions, too. Uh, I haven't heard that, but uh, I don't think that would go. I don't think it would. Uh, I know... Uh, I had one guy propose to me that teachers should pay, uh, uh, he believed teachers should pay uh, tax on their pensions and uh, that, that go to the pensions. Uh, but that's not going to happen. You know, I don't think it will. Uh, I know one representative from Louisville who uh, his opinion on how to fund it is he thinks anyone that makes by the way, he's the only one that thinks this. Uh, anyone that makes over 200000 a year is greedy and selfish. And that uh, uh, once you make $200,000, anything you make over that, 100% should go to the pensions. Uh, that's not going to pass, you know. Uh, but there's lots of ideas. Uh, there's very few mainstream majority opinion ideas. Okay, anything else? Yes. I'm not even sure what you call it, but the uh, teacher being allowed to uh, draw your spouse's so social security okay. windfall or we, whatever. We've tried that uh, many times and we haven't been able to get that through in Washington. I, I could mention this. There's been four meetings of the present group with uh, federal officials and with officials with social security in Atlanta trying to get Regulations changed for teachers can draw their spouses Social Security. We think that would that would give them more money. That would help the situation. We haven't been able to get that done in the past. I'm not greatly optimistic, but it it's that effort is being made. They're trying to, to throw that in the in the items that we're working on. There's been four meetings on that. And that should be done. One of our retired teachers has said uh, they had earned enough Social Security before they ever started teaching to have Social Security benefits. But because they became a teacher, they're not Still able can't to get, yeah. that, their Social Security. That should be changed too, but we need that changed in Washington. Yes. And there's bills so that there's a bill of that. It just doesn't have majority support yet. Yes. My son's been teaching 15 years, and he's very concerned that they're going to change everything on him here in the middle of the stream. Do you see that happening with your current 
teachers? My opinion is what he has earned uh, to find benefits he will keep. What sick days that he has uh, saved to apply toward his pension, he'll keep. Now there may be a plan from that point onward to do it differently. Uh, I don't know whether that will pass. I probably wouldn't support it. But they may, from that point onward, put him in a uh, uh, fine compensation. So he would have 15 years in defined benefits, and then he'd have a 401k for the rest of it. Uh, they may decide that any sick days he has in the future to pay him for them and not put on his pension. But I think any that he has earned up to this point uh, would count. The feeling I get from the conversations I have heard, anything that has been earned up to this point, they're going to go with. Let them keep it. That's my opinion. What about the years? Do you think that'll change from 27 for the current? I think it will change for new hires. I doubt it could change for anybody presently working, and I would be against that too. So you see, there's several pitfalls that may cause me to vote no, even though they have some good stuff in it. But uh, uh, I don't think that would happen. I, I, I think it is almost a given, definite that they will raise the years for the ones not hired yet. I've been told it's a possibility they'd go 30 years. I think it's possible. Uh, 29, 30, I think that's possible. And if you go in right out of college, that would get you to 52 or 30 years old. Anything else? Well, you got me. <laughs> I'm yours. You got me. <laughs> okay, my pleasure to be with you today. And I've told you like it is and how I see it and how I think it will be. And I'll be fighting for keeping promises and no cuts. Okay? Thank you. 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 Okay. And if we need anything during the special session, feel free to call us. Okay. My door is always open and welcome uh, emails, phone calls, anything. Okay. Come see me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.